welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am starting with a new chapter that is sexual reproduction in flowering plants. And this is the second chapter that is called sexual reproduction in flowering plants. This is one of the important and interesting chapter. Why it is interesting? Because of flower. You will come to know everything in detail. Uh, you will come to know everything in detail. First, we should know about a reproduction. You are familiar with the term reproduction. Because you already studied in the chapter, first chapter, reproduction in organisms, and even you studied in the chapter the living one. Then what is a reproduction? So reproduction it is a biological process. A reproduction is a biological process in which organism produces the egg ones or offsprings of its own kind. I said a reproduction is a biological process in which organisms produces the offsprings or egg ones of their similar kind. And this reproduction, so all living organisms will be exhibiting this feature that is a reproduction. So later these offsprings enter, they grow, they mature and they in turn produces new offsprings which means the process will be repeating over the generation after the generation. If reproduction doesn't occur, the continuity of species cannot be seen in case of living organisms. That's why reproduction is one of the important characteristic features of all living organisms that are clearly specified in the chapter the living one. You just recall the properties of living organisms that you studied in the chapter the living one. There are several living properties like growth, metabolism, reproduction, consciousness, adaptation, etc. Among all those, reproduction is considered as one of the most important characteristic feature of all living organisms. Then why it is most important? Because the reproduction will enable the continuity of species generation after generation and life exists on the earth due to the process of reproduction in case of organisms. So this is about reproduction. Now we will see the types of reproduction. As you studied earlier, there are two main types of reproduction. The first one is called asexual reproduction and the second one is called sexual reproduction. Then what is asexual reproduction? Asexual reproduction is a type of reproduction in which a single parent, in which a single parent, uh, a single parent gives rise to a new organism without the formation and fusion of gametes. This is very very important in case of asexual reproduction. As I said, asexual reproduction is a type of reproduction in which single parent produces the egg ones or offsprings without the formation and fusion of gametes. You should specify this term without the formation and fusion of gametes. As the asexual reproduction does not involve the formation and fusion of gametes, it is also called as agamogenesis. Are also called as agamogen. So you will be studying in detail about the process of asexual reproduction in the first chapter that is a reproduction in organism. Now we are talking about the another important type of reproduction that is sexual reproduction. Then what is sexual reproduction? It is also a type of reproduction in which offsprings are produced by the process of formation and fusion of gametes. Here I told you the offsprings are produced through the process of formation and fusion of gametes. So gametes in the sense the male and female gametes. So how the male and female gametes will be formed everything we can study later but the sexual reproduction it is a type 
type of reproduction in which offspring are produced by the process of formation of formation and division of gametes uh, if if i want to say in detail which includes the formation and division of haploid gametes especially the haploid male and female gametes and these two gametes later undergo fusion resulting in the formation of diploid zygote so we, we can define the sexual reproduction in another way also it is a type of reproduction in which offsprings are produced by the process of formation and fusion of haploid gametes resulting in the formation of diploid zygote in order to understand the definition uh, definition we can recall the life cycles that we studied in the chapter plant kingdom just you recall the life cycle studied in the chapter plant kingdom see in plant kingdom you already studied a different divisions which exhibit different types of life cycles among the you know flowering plants flowering plants are nothing but angiosperms angiosperms will exhibit a diploidic type of life cycle I, if you recall or if you remember the diploidic life cycle, that diploidic life cycle in case of angiosperms, the sporophyte is the main plant body which alternates with the gametophyte. Then what is sporophyte? Which is a spore producing plant body, and gametophyte is a gamete producing plant body. If you remember that schematic representation, it is better to understand the sexual reproduction. See. In that schematic representation, we can observe a sporophyte which produces flowers, and flowers produces male and female sex organs. And male and female sex organs, they will produce spores. Later, spores develops into gametophytes, and gametophytes will produce the gametes. Why I am explaining the diploidic life cycle here means because the the gametes cannot be directly produced from the sporophyte. Every time, sporophyte will first produce spores. Those spores develops into gametophytes, and gametophytes only produces gametes, but never the gametes are directly produced from the sporophyte. And in that schematic representation, we can clearly notice the formation of gametes and even the fusion of gametes. The male and female gametes undergo fusion, resulting in the formation of diploid cycle. In order to understand this, you just go through that diploidic life cycle in case of angiosperms. So later, after looking at the diploidic life cycle, you can clearly understand the type of reproduction that is sexual reproduction. Again, I am specifying the definition. It is very very important. Sexual reproduction. It is a type of reproduction in which offsprings are produced by the process of formation and fusion of Gametes. Now we will talk about the flowering plants and why we need to study sexual reproduction in case of flowering plants. You know, angiosperms are called as flowering plants as they produce flowers, which means the flowering the flowering plants they have organs specialized for the process of sexual reproduction. Hence, flower. Flower is regarded as the organ of sexual reproduction or reproductive organ in case of flowering plants. And this flower, it is very very important. It is very very interesting. I already told you why this chapter is very very interesting because of the flowers. Because everyone will be familiar with the flower. Now we are going to discuss about the one of the fascinating organ in flowering plants is called as flower. chapter morphology of flowering plants flower is a modified condensed show it is a modified condensed show and mainly meant for the sexual reproduction and you clearly studied how the shoot gets modified into flower everything you studied in the chapter morphology of flowering plants now all of us are familiar with the flowers because flowers are the most beautiful structures of nature with full of variety, shapes, colors and scent. Isn't it? Every day, every day you can observe a different varieties of flowers with the different colors, shapes, scent, everything. That's why I specified flower as a fascinating. 
flower not only they uh, they are full of variety colors everything even if we human beings we use flowers for expressing a different uh, to express or to convey certain feelings like love affection happiness grief mourning that is uh, sorrow everything we can express by using flowers and these flowers have the aesthetic value ornamental social cultural and religious values here yes it in the sense beauty ornamental decorative purpose and social religious purpose cultural value so all these values can be seen in case of flowers that's why flower is very very important and very very interesting and not only we even certain insects some other animals are also benefited with the flower for example honey bees so the honey bees will be attracted towards the flower they obtain nectar from the flower and gets converted into honey and not only these days the flower will be used for the purpose of dyes scent perfumes etc from the time a memorial so this is about certain interesting features regarding the flower now we are uh, i am going to explain the structure of a typical flower this is one of the important question you may expect this question in your question paper so let us discuss about the structure of a typical flower when we look at the flower already i have mentioned flower is a modified condensed shoot and these flowers are usually born over the mature plants due to hormone induced structural and physiological changes in the shoot episcis then each typical flower a flower will have a stalk the stalk of the flower is called as pedicel remember the stalk of the pedicel is called as so the stalk of the flower is called as pedicel whereas the stalk of the leaf is called petiole and stalk of the uh, stalk of the inflorescence is called peduncle here i am specifying the stalk of the flower is called as pedicel then the upper swollen part of the pedicel is known as thalamus stalk of the flower is a pedicel the upper swollen part of the pedicel is known as thalamus on which all the four floral parts actually the floral whorls are the modified leaves there are usually four whorls of flower which are usually arranged on the thalamus part then which are the four whorls of the flower the four whorls of a flower are calyx These are the four whorls of a flower. You should remember. You should note down these points. The four whorls of a flower are called calyx, corolla, angiosperm, and gynosperm. Let us see here in the flower. You can observe a star called as pedicel. Over the pedicel, the swollen part is called as a thalamus. All the thalamus, the innermost whorl of the flower is called as gynosperm, which can also be called as pistil. the pistil or gynosperm which represents the female reproductive part of the flower remember the female reproductive part of the flower is known as gynosperm which can also be called as pistil and this gynosperm consists of three parts namely the basal swollen portion called ovary the elongated stalk like structure called as style and the terminal expanded region is called as stigma the importance of all these uh, parts we will, will study later so gynosperm is mainly made up of three parts the basal swollen ovary elongated style and terminal stigma and this gynosperm is a female reproductive part of the flower then the next oral of the flower is called as andrisium which is uh, which can also be called as a stamen actually here you can observe four stamens the number of stamens may vary from flower to flower each one is called as a stamen all stamens together it is called as andrisium and andrisium is the male reproductive part of the 
flower. Remember, the male reproductive part of the flower is called as androecium. And each stamen, we will look at the each stamen. Each stamen comprises of two parts. One is an anther, which is usually lobed anther, which may be um, a single lobed or bilobed, that you will study later. And the slender stalk like structure is called as filament. Stamen is mainly made up of two parts, the anther and filaments which are attached to the thalamus part or may be attached to the petals, that's all. So this is the two orals of the flower and the remaining one, the third oral is called as corolla. The third oral is called as corolla, the corolla comprising of the brightly colored petals. Brightly colored petals. When you look at the flower, the petals are only attractive because they are brightly colored, not only attracting us, even the petals will be attracting the insects and birds and helps in pollination. In this corolla, so all petals together it is called as a corolla. Each unit of corolla is called as petal. Remember, the, the oral is called as a corolla. Each unit of corolla is called as then the outermost oral of the flower is called as calyx and each unit of calyx is called as sepal. Each unit of calyx is called as sepal. Then what is the main function of sepal means these sepals or calyx mainly helps in protecting the flower when it is in bud condition. I will repeat all these once again. When you look at the structure of a physical flower, the star of the flower is called as pedicel. The upper swollen part of the pedicel is called as thalamus. On the thalamus, all the four orals are arranged. In that, the innermost oral is called as gynecium, or also called as pistil, which is the female reproductive part of the flower, made up of or consists of three parts: the ovary, style, and stigma. The next oral is called as androecium, can also be called as stamen, comprising of two parts, anther and filament. Then the next oral is called as corolla, each unit of corolla is called as a petal, which is mainly attracting the insects, birds and helps in pollination. Then the outermost oral of the flower is called as a calyx, each unit of calyx is called as a sepal, mainly meant for production when the flower is in but condition. So this is the structure of a typical flower. Among the four orals of a flower, these two orals, that is calyx and corolla, these are called as non-essential orals. These are called non-essential orals are also called as accessory orals. Why they are called as non-essential or accessory orals? Because they do not take part in reproduction. But the androecium and gynecium are called essential orals. Androecium and gynecium are called as essential orals or also called as reproductive orals. You can understand why these two are called as essential or reproductive orals because they mainly take part in sexual reproduction. That's why I have specified the flower is an organ of sexual reproduction. So this is all about the structure of typical flower. In this class, I have explained about the reproduction, types of reproduction, asexual reproduction, sexual reproduction, and in case of flower, the structure of typical flower and the importance of flower. So in this class, you should remember all these things. You can make a note of it. And in the next class, I am going to explain about the free fertilization structures and events.